So, in this video, we're going to look at doing an ANOVA using R. We're going to be using for the example data from Chapter 9 in the textbook on nitrogen content of reeds at three different sites. And we're going to use the code, the R code, from the help sheet that's downloadable from the Online Resource Centre. Here's a copy here. You can see the first part of the help sheet talks about creating a uh, tab eliminated file for use in uh, for use in R, which you can do using Excel. And you can see the data for the independent variable in one column, labeled site, and that for the dependent variable nitrogen level in another column next to it. This is the same structure as the data would be if we were in SPSS. You can either make your own data file using the guidance here, or you can download a pre-made data file from the Online Resource Centre. Here's what it looks like if you open it in a, a, a new package that can read text file. So here we have the independent variable here, and the dependent variable next to it. This is what I call variable layout. That's what, the way you need to do it in SPSS, but you could also, actually in R, have the flexibility to have the three sites in columns next to each other. Call that sample layer, and there's some notes in the help sheet on that. Let's move the data off. We don't need that right now. We do need to get R up so we can get on with the analysis. If you want to know how to get R to look like this, there's an introductory video which we'll show you. Now we need the code from R, so down here up on the help sheet, let's highlight it. And copy it and paste it into R. Just a bit of housekeeping first, make sure everything's on the you know, all those notes are on the same line. Just put a return between the two parts of it so that we can um, just see it better doesn't affect functionality. Oh, and just um, uh, where the notes are, they all need to be on the same line, so remove that return. Okay, let's go to the top part here. Let's put the text in that's um, appropriate, which would be reads. We're going to call, we're going to put the data file into an object called reads. We've, we've, that's what we've decided to call it. You can call it, you know, I've decided to call it if you like. You can call it anything you like. But this is the object reads. Let's run that code. So I highlight it, control R. Um, data sets. It's hard for me to get the data sets and read beds. Here we go. Uh, so it's telling us we've got site and nitrogen as our two column headings, and that's important to pay attention to exactly how they're spelt and whether they're using upper and lower case. We can now go and fill in the code to actually get this to um, do an ANOVA for us. And I'm going to, you can put any w the words here, I I'm going to put the result of the ANOVA analysis into an object called ANOVA. It's not very imaginative of me, but that's um, what I'm going to do. And then here we put, next to this squiggly line, we're going to put um, the dependent variable, nitrogen. That's over here. That's the same spell, spelling and as it's over here. And then I'm going to put in here um, the independent variable. And in here, in the summary, that means print out the summary of the object called ANOVA and do a turkey post hoc test of differences on that include it in that analysis. So that's the object, same there, and over appears there and there. So that's doing it and that's printing it out, if you like. OK. OK, so we're now ready to do the analysis by highlighting the code and the notes and doing Control r And here you can see over in the console we've got our ANOVA table here with our F value and our um, P value. We've got 
Uh, down here we've got our differences between the different combinations between Site 2 and Site 1, that's the estimated effect, and the confidence intervals and between 3 and 1 and 3 and 2. And that's what you need to uh, report for your ANOVA.